going to get into the reading of the word before I have everybody sit. Uh, we are going to start from Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. It's a verse, it's a passage we're all pretty familiar with, and if you aren't, you will be familiar with it after tonight. These are the disciples. They say, teacher, which is the great commandment in the great commandment in the law? We're speaking of the commandments. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That alone ought to save somebody. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Which is actually the title for tonight's message. It is to love yourself. Father, your people have come with an expectation that you have a word for them. There's an expectation in their hearts and in their minds. Father, let the spirit of wisdom just fall upon me as I am here to do what you have sent me to do. So empty me out of all of my mess. Empty me out of all of me and let everything that proceeds forward from my lips be known as all of you. And Father, let every heart in this place be prepared to grab your word and to run with your word. Let it serve the very purpose that you placed in the atmosphere. And I just pray, Father God, your way and your will is done here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. For real, y'all can sit now. As we're sitting, I love to do this every time I speak here because it is such a blessing and truly an honor to be here on this platform. Can we acknowledge the people who built this platform? <laughs> Pastor Teray Roberts, First Lady Sarah Jakes Roberts. Yeah, you can stand and acknowledge for the people who have set this culture in motion, who have set forward a movement in motion that the world has not seen before. You can stand and clap for that. I'm going to let you do that. I know you're watching. I love y'all so very, very, very much. So let's jump into this. It's interesting, a couple of years ago, uh, I was blessed to preach a word called uh, rest ethic, I think is what it was called. And what was wild about it was it was based on a commandment, this idea of rest being a commandment, not an idea, not a suggestion, but actually a commandment from God. And it was quite a shocking revelation because a good deal of us have a hard time taking the time to rest. So when this passage uh, hit me, it was such a striking thing for me because here is what seems like such a simple thing. We are, we are now in the generation of uh, hmm, celebrating ourselves. I tried to put that as nicely as I could. <laughs> We are, we are the generation of celebrating ourselves, and not just celebrating ourselves, but celebrating ourselves openly for all to see, for as many followers as we can possibly get. This is the generation we're in now, and what is so striking about it is how in all of the celebration of self and all of the hoopla, and, and now there are programs to regenerate yourself and do this to yourself and self-help and do that to yourself, Somewhere along the line with all of these uh, machines, if you will, that, that allow for self-celebration, somewhere along the line, we missed out on a very basic commandment, which is to love yourself. 
I find it fascinating if we look at that commandment. Can we put up that word again? I love the sequencing because the sequencing will trip us up. Can we put up uh, Matthew 22 again? Because it says, love the Lord your God. Uh, we'll go from the beginning. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? Can we? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. We'll pause right there. With all your soul and all your mind. So Jesus establishes immediately, first and foremost, if we're going to get any sort of commandments right, it needs to start with this. Love him. Love him who created you. Love him who created the air you're breathing. Love him who sent the person you're asking this very question in this moment. So we have that basis. Love him. Love God with all your heart, your, all your soul, and all your mind, and keep going. This is the first great commandment. Keep going. And the second is like it. This is where it gets tricky. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right now, if we could keep that up there for a little bit, we are in a culture of division. We are in a culture right now where division is actively being sown. Those who choose to exert an authority do it by exerting it according to sowing division. It's about how different you are from me, how different we are, how different we think, how different we speak, how different we live. We're so different. We're so different we shouldn't be together. We're so different you should be in that corner and I should be in this corner. And even though we're different and we're all created by the same God, we all have access to the same God, we're all created and operating under one spirit, we're so different we should pretend as if we don't know this spirit together and you should do it your way and I should do it my way and we should never come together because we're so different. It says you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so now what we actively try to do is we say no it, it's about love we gotta love each other we gotta love your neighbor and it's true it's wonderful it's great except that's not the order we get so focused on trying to love our neighbor in the face of a lot of the division and for lack of better words hate speak that is being sown actively into different areas of our culture i gotta love my neighbor no matter what my, who my neighbor is no matter how i gotta love him i gotta love him and i love the heart behind that but we can't love the neighbor if we don't love ourselves in fact we can't even fully, we can't even fully manifest and be the evidence of the God we love if we don't love ourselves. When God set this forward, he set forward a contract. God, me, neighbor, in that order. I can't love my neighbor in fullness and truth if I haven't figured out how to love myself yet. If I haven't even accepted all of my own faults. If I can't even accept how redeemed I really am if I am walking in Christ. And accepting that redemption means I got to cop to all the stuff that I did before Jesus caught me. I love, listen, I am all about being a new man, but being a new man is not about forgetting, literally, I don't know who that was. No, I know exactly who that was. But the key word is was. I know who that was. Past tense. And then I know who I am, and then I know who God has called me to be. And so if I'm really going to walk in the fullness of this, I'll call it a love contract, which is to love God, love myself, and love my neighbor, I got to get the middle first. I have to be the bridge. Because if I cannot love myself, I cannot manifest this love that God has on the inside of me so that it passes on to the next person. It stops literally at me. If it has not penetrated to me on the inside of me, I can't then send it to my neighbor. In fact, what our neighbors are supposed to get is overflow. 
I'm supposed to be so healthy and so whole and so used to loving myself that by the time my neighbor gets anywhere near me, they, they have no choice to receive love. It's pouring out of my speech. It's pouring out of my eyes. It's pouring out of my thoughts. It's pouring out of my prayers. It's pouring out of how I write. It's pouring out of how I use my gift. It's literally pouring out of my presence. I walk in the room and people start smiling. Why? Because I am love. I am not perfect. I am love. Those are two different things. Because walking with God's love is accepting our imperfections. Once we decide the only way I can love my neighbor is to be perfect and be so perfect that I show them how to be perfect, that's not love. That's judgment. God didn't call us to judge. That judgment thing is way above our spiritual pay grade. I, that's not my assignment. I got too many really complicated assignments with my name on them to take ones that don't have my name on them. But in a time like now, I just want to remind everybody here that we have to be in the practice of loving ourselves because not only does our neighbor miss out if we don't love ourselves, we do. Because to walk without the knowledge, not only that God loves us, but that we love ourselves, is to walk, I would say, dry is the best way to put it. When you can walk with such an anointing that you are, you literally know who you are. You are not so forgetful. You don't walk around and say, I am better than. You just walk around saying, I'm me. I'm exactly who God created me to be. And all of who I was before is part of my testimony. Everything that happened before to, to the point where I am right now, that's a part of my process. That's a part of my testimony. It is evidence of his deliverance. It is evidence of his grace. It is evidence of his glory. It is evidence of his love. I'm telling you his love is real. I cannot speak to you about the love of God and not walk it out in my own way and say, well, if God can forgive me, then I need to be able to forgive myself. If we get this self-love thing right, when you can look in the mirror and love yourself, there is not a filter on the gram that will ever match the beauty of what you see. There is not a camera setting that could capture the majesty of who you are when you look in the mirror and say, I love myself, and you mean it. Matter of fact, we're going to do it right now. Don't be embarrassed. It's just us. I'm going to count to three, and everyone under the sound of my voice, I want you to say it like you mean it. I love myself. I'll say it right along with you, because I promise I had to go through this so that I could get this to you. We're going to speak on that in a second. On the count of three, I want to hear this house declare it. One, two, three. I love myself. I heard a couple people shout it. I'm not mad. Sometimes self-love is loud. Now, the boldness in that declaration is not because we so fly. We are, but that's not why we love ourselves so much. We're able to love ourselves because we know who created us. We're able to love ourselves because we not only know who created us, we know that he loves us beyond who we even believe we are. I hope I'm saying that as clear as I can see it. 
when we approach the throne and speak to God, I love this because PT covered this a couple weeks ago. God has literally blotted out our transgressions for his own sake so that his holiness is fully inhabited when he speaks to us. So when God speaks to us, he's not only seeing what you've done, he's seeing who you are, who you were, and who you're about to be. And he says, I love all of it. And I love that. That's beautiful. But now I have to think about it and say, if, if I'm made in his image, that means I need to be able to look at myself and do the same thing within myself. That means I need to be able to look myself in the eye every single day I wake up and say, I love myself. I know I'm a work in progress. I love myself. I know God told me to do this. I didn't do it quite the way he told me to do it. But I still have breath in my body, so it's another chance to get it right. And he still loves me, and I am still breathing, so I love myself. It means every opportunity that God gives us is one we have to not only live out, we have to inhabit it. Every mistake is just an opportunity to say, wow, God loved me through that. There is nothing that I can do to take his love away from him for me. The only thing that can happen is I can blind myself to my love for me. And now, since I cannot love myself, I now have a problem accepting that he could love me or that anyone else could love me. That is the only problem. That is where our battle is. It is in loving ourselves. And so I want to look at this from three different areas. And I'm going to keep this very simple. We have to love who we were. And I'll give that one word, that's forgiveness. Because when you can walk with forgiveness, eternal forgiveness for yourself, then you meet somebody who has been in your situation and maybe even worse. And you say, well, I've forgiven me and God has forgiven me and he's placed that on the inside of me. And he's done this so often. We have worked out this forgiveness thing for who I was so often that by the time someone comes to me, I got no choice but to forgive you. It's just how I roll. It's just who I am. It's just who, who, he, who he created me to be. So it starts with loving who we were. All of it. All of it. All of it. There is no room for shame and self-love. There is no room for shame in self-love. So whatever that event or that moment or that season was, where you think you have gotten past it, but every time it comes up, it makes you feel as if there's no way someone could love me because this happens. Whenever that moment comes up, whenever that memory comes up, you need to speak the truth to that thing, which is that is a part of who I was. I love who I am now. God has forgiven me. He has covered me. He has redeemed me. He will never forsake me. And I move forward. So it starts literally with loving who we were. And I'm not even saying from a month and a half, two months, three months, two years. I mean literally right now. Here's the beauty of continuing to love yourself and to love who you were. Five minutes ago, I was a different person. I love that dude. The pastor Ebenezer that drove, well, actually, my wife drove. Thank you, baby. Who got here is a different person, and I love him too. All the thoughts he had, all the crazy plans he had, 
All the foolish thoughts that ran through my mind that I decided to let run right out my mind. I love him too. Because he's along for the ride with me. When I get to that incredible moment where God puts me on that scale and he weighs me, he's not going to chop off that part of the experience and just take all the good stuff and put me on the scale. He's weighing all of who I am, so I had better get used to that. So there is forgiveness and, and, and acceptance in terms of loving who you were. That's my first piece. The second one, and I think you'll start to catch the gist of where I'm going, is loving who you are. Who you are, not who you want to be, watch this, not what other people respond to. God has blessed each and every, every one of us which, with exceptional gifts, incredible gifts, incredible abilities and talents and, and, and uh, characteristics and personalities and quirks and things. And depending on who you are in a given moment, some people will react to that particular quirk and talent. And they'll react in a favorable way, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to avoid the trap of thinking that's all of who we are. Because what will happen is we'll just show that part of us all the time. That'll be the only side we show anybody. If you are great at telling jokes, the first time you tell a joke and a room laughs, you're like, wow, that was amazing. I, feel the, I just felt the appreciation and the love. And I want to feel that all the time. And now all you do is tell jokes. Only problem with that is I can't trust you because if I'm in a serious situation <laughs> and I need you not to be joking right now, you're going to get everybody in trouble. But people will only know you for that one thing. And then people will place expectations on you for that one thing, for that one area of your personality. If you are an optimist, that's all people are going to know you as, the optimist. And they bring you in, I don't know what's going on. Bring in the optimist. I need to feel better not realizing you are a whole and complete human being. You are not optimistic 24-7 from dusk till dawn. There are moments where your optimism does not suit you. Sometimes there is some realism you need to have to balance out that optimism, and that's what allows us to be functional and whole. But if people only know you for one area of your life and they show appreciation and they acknowledge it and we start to hunger for the appreciation and the acknowledgement, we start to ignore all the other parts of who we are. So now we're just feeding that one part and everything else is dying. And as everything on the inside of us starts to die, we can't understand why we don't feel complete. We don't understand why it is we start to feel what? Bitter. Why is it every time I go somewhere, people want me to tell jokes? <laughs> Why can't nobody take me seriously? Because that's what that voice sounds like when we say stuff like that. And the reason it's that way is because that's all you've shown. You haven't given anybody the opportunity to see the rest of who you are because we're only going to show the, the side of me that's going to get the likes. I'm only going to show you the side of me that's going to get the hearts. I'm only going to show the side of me that gets me in the door. I'm only going to show the side of me that might grease the wheels for my opportunity. I'm only going to show the side that brings a smile to people, that makes them feel comfortable. Meanwhile, it's making me feel uncomfortable, incomplete, not whole, and I'm dying on the inside. In terms of loving who you are, it is loving all of it. Every single piece of who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, your holes, the things you don't even know about yourself, love it. Do not run from that area of who you are where you're like, I don't really know that person. You know, there are people who like, don't really know what makes them smile. You ever met really, really just stern people? Every, just every, every, you like smile like, I am. Like, man, and you realize that they don't know what makes them smile. 
or vice versa. You have people who kind of look like the Joker, like they smile at everything. <laughs> Stuff is dead wrong and they're like. <laughs> and like, yo, you look a little psycho and a little weird. <laughs> or are just happy all of the time. I love the joy of the Lord, but there are days. <laughs> there are days where I'm just not feeling that in that moment. And guess what? I love myself then, too. Because when I'm not feeling it, I go to the person who is the source. I say, Lord, I am not feeling your joy. Why is that? What is happening on the inside of me that has shut off my joy receptors? Because I should be feeling joy right now. You told me your joy brings everything I need. Things we don't know about ourselves, love them because they're opportunities to go to God for him to tell you. So not only do we need to love who we were, we have to also love who we are right now with the entire list of your, with your whole to-do list. They ain't got no checks on it. It's okay. I feel your pain. You still love yourself anyway because you are an evolving process. For that first section where you have to love who you are, that takes forgiveness. For loving who, for, I'm sorry, for loving who you were, that takes forgiveness. For loving who we are right now, that takes patience. That takes patience because we are constantly evolving. We are constantly growing. Even right now, as you are receiving this message, there are things happening on the inside of your mind. There are things happening in your heart. There are things that have happened in the past that you now see in a different way, and you, whether you're taking notes or you get in the car, tomorrow morning, my prayer is that you wake up with a completely different understanding because you now know the power of loving yourself. But that means you gotta love yourself right now as you receive the word. And if you don't fully understand or get it, love yourself now. Love yourself now anyway. Because guess what? When you do get it, you will look back on the moment and say, ooh, I'm so glad that I loved myself enough to just hold on to it <laughs> until it made sense. To love yourself in terms of who you are, that takes patience. The last part that I want to go over is loving who you're going to be. And that takes faith. Because you haven't seen who you're going to be before. In fact, according to God, God's word, no one's seen it. Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. You have to believe in something you have not seen before, but God has placed the seed on the inside of you that continues to speak to you every single day. And it says, this is who you're supposed to be. This is who you're supposed to be. This is who you, I don't know who I'm talking to. This is who you're supposed to be. And you hear it every single day. You get in your car and you do something that is not who you're supposed to be. And you hear that voice said, that's not you. That's not you. That's not you. That's not you. And you have to deal with that voice until you make the lifestyle change that lines up with who you are becoming. Which means we have to love ourselves before we become who we're supposed to be. Because we are always in a state of becoming. We can't afford to wait to become and then love ourselves. We'll never love ourselves. We're always becoming. So you cannot wait to say, when I become that person, that's when I'm gonna love myself. When I get that promotion, that's when I'm gonna love myself. When I've established this incredible habit, that's when I'm gonna love myself. When I stick to my workout plan past January, that's when I'm gonna love myself. Ooh, I struck a nerve. Somebody canceling memberships right now. We cannot wait to become the person 
that God is calling us to be to begin the love process because we're violating the love contract that is the commandment that he has set forth. My neighbor can't wait for me to love myself later. My neighbor is literally waiting for me to love myself now because my neighbor needs the love that's on the inside of me. That's why that person's next to me as my neighbor. I love it because the word neighbor as it's used in here is, is uh, a fellow person of the faith, a fellow Christian. And so I want to make sure we don't get this confused because this does not mean the only people I love are my fellow Christians. Here's the problem with that. You don't know when somebody's going to get saved. Somebody could get saved on their deathbed. And here's the thing. If I've met this person, I, let's say I have that neighbor that has that attitude that just makes life really, 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 really hard. And they've made life hard for God knows how many years, and they've just been mean, and they've been angry, and they've been nasty. And I'm just like, I'm not going to love them. I can't love them, God. I don't understand it. I can't deal with this person. I don't have love for them. Da -da 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 -da. And then that person passes, and on their deathbed, they receive Christ Jesus. Guess what? That means everything that had before, happened before them, they're redeemed. So in God's eyes, that person went saved. I'm supposed to love my neighbor. I spent all these years not loving my neighbor, not understanding that it's not my timing, but God's timing. So if I'm going to operate under God's timing, I have to love you regardless because you might get saved tomorrow and today's hate is hurting me and me only. And I'm not taking that with me. I can't get to the gates and look at my seat and start to walk over. God's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where, where, where do you think you're going? And I'm like, wait, I don't understand. That's my seat. You, you held it for me. I'm, I'm grateful. But I loved my neighbor. He's like, oh, no, you didn't. See that neighbor right there? The neighbor you were cussing out in your mind? That neighbor that you were mad at? The neighbor who you wouldn't give help to because they had a nasty attitude, even though I told you to help them, that neighbor, that neighbor who you knew couldn't possibly have my love in him, according to your judgment, that neighbor, well, right before that neighbor shut his eyes, got saved. So that means you missed one. Now I got to stand at the gate. And security's just like, security. get him out of there. He's acting really disruptive. Get him out of here. He's not getting in. Oh, he's causing a ruckus. Get him downstairs. Get him downstairs. Get him downstairs. I ain't trying to be that one. I'm going to love the angry neighbor. I am loving that angry neighbor. I am loving that angry neighbor. I am loving that nasty neighbor. I ain't got to deal with you often, but I do have to have love in my heart for you. I can do that. And who knows, if I love myself enough, this neighbor is going to wonder, what is this guy doing? Who does he serve? Who is he praying to? When he goes to church, who's speaking to him? What's happening in his life? Because he's got so much love in him, and I've got so much hate in me, and he seems really happy, and I seem really not. Maybe I should check out who he's checking out. And that neighbor gets saved in that way. My point is this, we have to love ourselves for who we were, for who we are, and for who we are going to be. And we gotta do all three all the time. Which means chances are, if we are having a moment where we are not feeling anything but God's love, God's agape love on the inside of us, one of those is, is probably deficient. I love where I'm going, I love who I am, but I still got no love for who I used to be. I understand and I forgive and I love on who I used to be and I love who I'm gonna become, but I don't love who I am right now. I love my past, I, I get it, I understand its place and I love who I am right now and watch this. This is the future trap. The future trap isn't that you're going to hate who you see. The future trap is 
you are going to love who you are right now so much that you won't let it go when it's time to let it go. And so future you is like, come on, 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 come on. Start the new life, come on. Break the old habits, come on, come on. Get the new word, come on, come on. Be the living water, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Flowing from your belly, come on, come on, come on. Dripping with anointing, come on, come on, come on. Purpose, come on, come on, come on, come on. And you so in love with the you right now, you're like, I'm good. I'm good right here, like this is comfortable, you know, I'm a, I'm used to me, and this is how I roll, and this is my habits, and this is just, I love this one, this is just who I am. The only person who gets to claim that is God. I am that I am. God is the only one who gets to use that phrase in its entirety in truth. When we say that, we are denying who we are to become. Love who you were, love who you are, love who are you, you are becoming, and do it all at the same time. Because watch this, they all influence each other. Who you are is to be a reflection of what's coming. Everything you're doing now is so that you can link up with what's coming. Everything, everything, everything. I pray tonight, God, show me who I am becoming. Give me a clear vision of whom I am becoming. And I will rewrite everything in my calendar. I will change whatever I need to change to line up with who I'm becoming. God, give me an understanding of why what happened to me back then happened back then and how it got me here. And so then now I, that I am here, I can move forward. Because this is how God loves us. He loves us in that outside of time sort of way. And we, inside of time, have to do the same. I want to leave you with this because I always put forth a challenge. What you say, what you do, and who you are around all should reflect how much you love yourself. I'll say it again. What you say, what you do, and who you are around, all should reflect how much you love yourself. I mean, how can I say no? What you say, what you do, and who you are around all should reflect how much you love yourself. I should be able to look at the people you hang with and know this person loves themselves because they are around people who edify them. They are around people who stretch them. They're around people who grow them. They're around people who challenge them. They're around people who will say no to them when they're acting crazy. They're around people who hear from God. They're around people who can send up a prayer and you know it's gonna get heard. They are around sound, wise people. Next time you look at somebody and you're like, should I invite them into my circle? Look at their circle. Before you step into my circle, because my circle is tight. Before you get in my circle, let me step back and see your circle real quick. Who you hang with? Who on your Instagram? What you say is a reflection of how you love yourself. Yeah. How you talk about yourself. Yeah. 
is a reflection of how you love yourself. How you speak about yourself. You better watch it because people are paying attention. How you speak about yourself reflects how you love yourself and what you do. What fruit have you borne? Because your fruit ought to be a reflection of how you love yourself. Family, I love that the verse that we looked at earlier, literally God says, hang all of the commandments on these. Because you need this to love yourself, to love your neighbor, and to love God. You need that in order to enact and walk and embody and live by the commandments that he put forward. You can't do any of the commandments without them. Not a single one. If God saw fit to hang all of the commandments on this, our reasonable duty is that we need to hang our life, our lifestyle, our thoughts, our thought regulation, our spirit, our spirit management. We need to hang all of these things on this. I'm over time. Let's stand. Oh, we're going to love ourselves. This generation is going to love themselves in the God-minded way, the way he intended. And you just watch the shift in the world and the shift in the environment when you have a group of people who say, I love myself and I refuse to stop it here. I'm just going to let it overflow. Family, I'm going to make this altar call quick. I came to this word because I realized I was having a problem loving myself. And it was interfering with how I am supposed to do life and how I am supposed to see life and how I'm supposed to see people. My thoughts were not the way God intended for them to be. I was acting like a completely different person. And I realized that, and I will use the word, the bitterness that was starting to well up on the inside of me was not because of what was happening to me, but it was because of the lens I was viewing what was happening to me through. And that lens was, there's a part of me that I just, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't mastered my love for myself in that area yet. If you're here in this place, and there is an area that I outlined, and it might be all three areas. And you know that loving yourself, you can't even, you struggle to even say the words, I love myself. If you know when you say it, you cannot fully believe it yet, come on down to this altar. Come on down to this altar. I don't care if it's who you were, I don't care if it's who you are. I don't care if it's who you're gonna be. If you have a problem of loving any quadrant of who you are, you come on down because we need to remove that lie right now. Come on down. If you are watching, come on down. Come on down, we gonna work this love thing out right here right now your neighbor needs you to love yourself so you can love your neighbor come on down it's not going to run out either if it's coming from god there's plenty of it Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have identified a root. That your word, your living word, penetrated. It literally pierced between joint and muscle, dividing the soul and the spirit. It pierced and it hit a root. And that root is in a lack of love. 
in some part of how we see ourselves. We thank you, God. Right now, since you are there, since you have pierced yourself into that root, Father, pull out that weed. Remove those tares, O oh God, and sow seed that will bear the truth, the fruit that only could come from you, which is that because you love me regardless of who I am, I now take hold of the authority and the power that you have placed on the inside of me to love every single portion of who I am because I am redeemed, because I am loved. I am loved with a forever love. I am loved with an everlasting love. I am loved with an all-powerful love. I am loved with an all-timeless love. And you have chosen this moment right now to open my eyes and my heart to receive that love. And that love is an overflow. And I receive that overflow because you have said in this moment, you've chosen this vessel. You've chosen this time. You've chosen this place to say yes I will pour down through the windows of heaven a love that is not only needed but a love that has never been seen before and we have said we will receive that love we are submitting our eligibility claim we are receiving all of that love, a love that is washing over us right now, a love that is washing away pain, a love that is washing away lies, a love that is washing away the death on the inside of us, and a love that is making room for your word, for your truth, for your life, for your living water, for all that you have in store for me, a love that is clearing out my insides and making me brand new we receive every drop of that love as it falls from heaven and we know that it is a waterfall for a waterfall it is an everlasting fountain so everywhere we go we don't have to wait till thursday night to receive that love we can receive that love anywhere any place anytime around anyone no matter what anyone says That love belongs to us because it came from you and you put our names on it. And Father, I thank you for the willing hearts who came, who showed, who exposed that area of their hearts that needed your love and received it. We thank you, Father. And from this moment, we are beloved. From this moment, we are love. And everything we say, everything we do, all of who we are is going to be a reflection of our love for ourselves, which connects to our love for you and allows us to love our neighbor. Spirit of overflow, fall in this place. And we thank you now and in advance for the increase of love and the perspective shift that was this night. In Jesus' matchless name we pray, amen.